Joining us now is Yasmin Tayag, science editor at Inverse. Yasmin, thanks as always for joining us here today. Hi guys. All right, how does this DNA testing process work? Tell us all about it. It's really amazing. So the scientists, they found a way to sample all of the seizures that are made at the different ports. This is how ivory is transported from Africa to mostly China. And they would take samples and look at the DNA of each individual tusk. And from there, they can figure out within 300 kilometers where that tusk came from in Africa. Wow, within 300 kilometers. It's pretty how, accurate. How yeah, what's, what's the data that they yeah. see in the DNA? They look at little um, mutations in 16 specific genes. And from there, they can sort of localize it to a specific area. They know all the elephants have a have those mutations in a certain area. There's that much of a difference in genetic makeup from just 300 kilometers? Is that specific to elephants or? Uh, I'm sure it's, the, it's the, the same with humans. We see vary depending on yeah. like where, how our interactions with the environment affect our DNA. And it seems to be the case with the elephants. And so they have a very specific map. And that has been so instrumental in helping them find three of the biggest ivory cartels in the world. Wow. Why is this something that uh, ivory smugglers are still getting away with? You know, it's really sad how easy it seems for them. The ivory is poached from, you know, little pockets of Africa, but there are hot spots. But these filter up through middlemen all the way up to, you know, the greater organizers who then stuff it into shipping containers and then these shipping containers go off. And so because there are a, about a billion containers that are shipped around the world every year, only one to two percent can be checked. And as the scientists wow. told me, a lot of the time the tusks are like shoved into a container with like rotting fish and like other kinds of stuff that the officials just don't want to dig through. Oh, wow. And so, so much of the time it just gets past officials. So do you think we're quite far away then from preventing illegal wildlife trading? If I'm being frank, I do think we're quite a long way away from it, but with this technique where they can trace the organizers, um, trace all the different seizures back to the organizers, hopefully that'll help, you know, if they can gather enough evidence, hopefully it can help them, you know, catch the three, top three bad guys. You want to talk about the other? Yeah, the I want, other this is a good, good okay, one. so let's get to another <laughs> group of science headlines that we're following. So a group of researchers actually found that octopuses act more social when they're given ecstasy. <laughs> Who uh, does Breaking news, guys, and <laughs> DNA. Uh, you would think, right? Like, to the average person, you think, yeah, obviously, if you're an MDMA, you're going to be a lot more social. You're going to want to hug, which is what these octopuses did. Um, but octopuses are known to be very antisocial. And so that's why this was so surprising. Normally, they just like to hide out by themselves. They only come out to eat. And once a year, when they have to, they'll mate. Oh, wow. But most of the time, it's like, no new friends. <laughs> no new friends. Why did scientists want to test this? on octopuses. Oh, first of all, what's the plural of octopus? It is octopuses? It's octopus. I had to look it up. I okay. thought it was octopi, it but it's not, me, but... right? <laughs> um, well, they want to test this because they are sort of looking, A, at the effects of MDMA and how it makes organisms more social. And, but more importantly to this experiment, it was how, how far social behaviors go back in our evolution. So we know that humans and other vertebrates like us, that's you know, animals with a backbone, we have social um, pathways in our brains that allow us to do the social behaviors we do. But octopuses and other invertebrates are so different to us. Their brains are different, their anatomy is different, and we're like, there's no way they have the same social abilities. But this experiment where they react to MDMA in a similar way to we do, shows that maybe these social pathways are conserved so far back in our evolution that other animals might have them too. Hugging octopuses is very scary to me. Yasmin Tag, science editor at Inverse, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, guys. Thanks,